going on everybody it's Austin Holloman yes I broke the fast and I started drinking again uh, I drank four drinks in one night and I've had the worst hangover I feel like I've had in my entire life and that's just all four drinks when before that it would take like 10 to do that I still wouldn't wake up with a hangover so my body had officially reset but I'm back in the game now and I'm over here at this place called Pallet I believe it's Pallet Cafe over here on the northern side of uh, Nairobi and it is a cafe restaurant that has deaf people only as a staff so I thought that was pretty cool because they employ deaf people and give them an opportunity and a job so make sure you check them out and support the business because that is a really good cause that I would have never thought of myself to them I guess you know somebody has a disability uh, but it's a nice little vibe over here they have uh, a small pool right here it looks like and then they have a bigger pool at the end so make sure y'all check them out if y'all come over here and it's just right here in the middle of the trees it's just a vibe over here so y'all can see for yourself right there but i have another special guest that i had in the uh, matatu video when i first got here y'all may know him as gmt travels so uh we're gonna ask him some questions about what he thinks about the dating space out here in nairobi y'all know what i think about it y'all know i love it and uh this is where the reset happens at for me now um tell everybody where you from i'm originally from charleston south carolina i used to live in atlanta georgia now i currently live in houston texas mm -hmm. i travel when i'm not working so yep mm -hmm. okay so uh um, you what what is your I heard you say you recommended that men when they come here to use Tinder as their form of pipeline. And how has that been for you? And what makes you say that you recommend that? I recommend dudes that never been here before to use Tinder before they get here. So when they come here, they're not alone. Because, I mean, after you're here for a while, you already know enough people. You don't have to go on Tinder anymore. But if, you, if you've never been here before, and it's like you're, you get here on like a weekday, you don't know where to go at. Tinder may help you, you know, get started, you meet a chick, she show you around, vibe, you get to know the lay the land, all that stuff. So I recommend Tinder for people who've never been here before. If you've been here before, you know you don't really need Tinder. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't. Because I don't use it. And for some reason, globally, Tinder, all the date naps, I think I've only met three chicks worldwide. Three or four maybe worldwide. Even in Brazil, worldwide off date naps. And in Brazil, you don't need date naps either. You really don't. You just need to walk down the street, <laughs> daytime, nighttime, <laughs> one o'clock in the morning. Nairobi's like that too. Uh, Nairobi's not a dry place when it comes to having options. So, what would you recommend their Tinder profile look like whenever they get to Nairobi? What should they set it up like? I say just be clean cut. They're going to know you're American regardless. Be clean cut. And just but what be about being confused for Nigerian? Oh, really, you can't do nothing about that because the American dude presence isn't here enough that they recognize us. And the Nigerians kind of, they dress like us, they show off like us, they act like us, they look like us. So they don't see us here. We're not here enough. So they're going to think you're Nigerian. So, yeah, I mean, there's no way to get around that. But um, you just got to let them know you're not Nigerian, you're American because, you know, they got a bad reputation. Not all of them, but you know some of them. But, um, but yeah. Just let them know you're American and just be honest, be upfront, and just talk to them, ask them where they want to go, where they hang out at, and just show them around. Or they'll probably show you around, but it's pretty easy because you know how to, like keen women are. They'll you don't have to like try hard to talk to them; they talk to you. <laughs> so yeah, go elaborate on that. Tell us how Kenyan women are, because I've said that too. That they it seems like they drank two cans of Red Bull. And you know what? Kenyan women. I went to uh, HBCU for three years, and Kenyan women remind me of college chicks. Like just like. They're like, their personality, they're smart, they drink a lot, and they just, they're cool people. It's a, it's a vibe. It reminds me of college, honestly. And um, you don't have to, if they like you, they're going to let you know they like you. So you don't have to like yes. try too hard. You don't have to go hard. You don't have to entertain. Matter of fact, they entertain you. So, <laughs> so you don't really have to worry about that with Kenyan women. So. And that's what I love. That's what I love about them too, man. Oh, man. Same way they like to be entertained, I like to be entertained too. <laughs> <laughs> this this that's fifty percent of the reason why I can't leave this place. Hey, when you said um, can you remind you of a chick that's on two Red Bulls, I knew you were lying because because <laughs> that's exactly how they are. Very entertaining they're to be entertaining. around. Very fun. Very talkative. They just got a lot of energy. I've been in like seven countries in Africa, and this is probably the only place where I can stay indoors the entire time and be happy mm -hmm. and have no interest in going outside the house because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're so entertaining. You don't have to go to where they're going to 
cracking jokes, drinking with you, vibing with you, all that stuff. So yeah, that's Kenya for you. So if that's what you're into, it's the place for you. Yeah, no dr dry phone calls, really. Every Everything is, and they're, they're <laughs> usually available to meet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's This is definitely a, uh, a go-to spot. And don't say that, oh, Austin blowing up the spot. Uh, this spot was blowing up a long time ago. <laughs> I'm just enhancing the blow up. And the Kenyans love that I enhance the blow up. So I'm going to start recording some fans that... Because I get stopped four or five times a day. I'm going to start putting it on video so y'all know what kind of love the Kings give you. Now, I noticed in my comments that would, would, out of all African countries, would you say Kings give the most love on YouTube? Because they always say, I need citizenship. That's what they tell me a lot. And out of all the countries in the world I've been to, they've never said that anywhere else. I think out of every country I've been to in Africa so far, I've been to Ghana, Ivory Coast, Morocco, Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, and I would say Kenyans do accept you the most, and they they genuinely like you. And I have local friends. Mm -hmm. Like some places, you may get like a local that might want to like want something from you, but I have genuine local friends here, like dudes and females, mm -hmm. and they genuinely show you love on the internet, and they don't even like look at you as even when I tell them I'm from America. Sometimes they're like, "You're from America." But where are your family from? Like some time they don't even believe me. <laughs> they be like, like, where are you from in Africa? Like, where are you really, really from? And like when I went to Ghana, they knew I wasn't from there. I went to Uganda, they called me Mazungu. When um mm -hmm. in, in South Africa, as soon as I opened my mouth, they knew I was from. They thought it was Zulu until I opened my mouth. They didn't know I was American in South Africa. So yeah, this is the only place like they really they genuinely accept you. And so they say we're from West Africa. Uh, but I'm not going to lie to you, I got way more love in Kenya than West Africa, and that may piss some West Africans off, but the truth is the truth, uh, especially in Ghana. So I had a video recently that went viral, uh, mainly in West Africa, it seems like, where I just made a statement that West Africans look exactly like us. And they're correcting me in the comments, no, y'all look exactly like us. And it's not a, a, a competition about who looks like who, I'm just saying we look damn near the same. Right. And uh, there's all kinds of Nigerians and Ghanaian people saying that we stole their style. I, I don't know. I'll tell you this. I haven't heard that in Kenya at all. I, and they, and these are not, to be honest, these are not our bloodline people. But I've gotten the most acceptance in this country from people that, you know, no Kenyan slaves were shipped to USA, from my understanding. Yep. But the ones in Ghana were. And it's not that they weren't welcoming or they were just rude in Ghana, but they just weren't. It, it wasn't Kenya. So what age range of people or men would you say should come to Kenya and why? I think Kenya, you can come any age range because the party life is here. And like the women and people remind me of culture. Like I said, I went to HBCU and the energy is the same way. So whether you're 18 18, 21 and up, you would love it here because you can drink, buy, meet people, and if you're older, you can do the same thing too, or if you want to settle down, you can get you a, a traditional chick that's from the village or just, you know, that's not too far out there or whatever, so um, all ranges, and I recommend everybody come here first and not Ghana. Yeah, and that, I did a video about that, I did a live stream where I said, <laughs> black Americans need to start in Kenya, that way you have your standard and you have that, that in my in my own words, the best African experience so far. I would put it here and then I'd put Tanzania next from where I've been. Yeah. And then when you go to West Africa, you can really see that difference. Because I ain't gonna lie, if I started in West Africa, uh, I probably would've went back to South America <laughs> or went to Europe or somewhere else next because... And you know what else though? I've been to West Africa, North, East and South and um, West Africa, don't, don't get me wrong, I like Ivory Coast, that was my favorite in West Africa. It's so expensive out there. Mm -hmm. People don't realize how expensive West Africa is. Ghana, because when I even, like you said what you said about Ghana, I knew it was true because you go to clubs in Accra, they spend big money in Accra. Like, it's not it's, it's not like you think you back in Atlanta or Houston. Yeah. Ain't, ain't no difference. They really spend big money. In Ivory Coast, they're in the West African um, Frank out there. And everything just costs a lot. It's not even about flexing in the Ivory Coast. It's just super expensive. So. West Africa has definitely cost a lot. It was a good vibe out there too, but it just price-wise, East Africa and South Africa is just better. Yeah, going from Kenya to West Africa, I went to Ghana and Senegal. Uh, in between flights, Airbnbs, and spending money on the town, I spent six thousand dollars. 
<laughs> I spent six thousand dollars in about. I was there seventeen. I was there maybe twenty four days in West Africa. I spent six thousand dollars. Jesus Christ! In Kenya, I would have had to really been showing my ass. <laughs> like I would have had to been at some club spending two three hundred dollars a night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To even think I was gonna run through that. Yeah, it'd be hard to do that in Kenya because the bottles cost like sixty dollars, fifty dollars. Yeah, Sometimes money. cheaper than that. It's cheaper than that depends where you go at, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. I just, just say, man. Just I recommend going to East Africa first and then South Africa, because for me personally, my number one Africa so far is Kenya, South Africa, and I haven't been to Tanzania yet. I'm supposed to be going there when I leave here, so I'm looking forward to Tanzania for the first time. But so far for me, Africa, Kenya is still number one, and South Africa is a strong number two. <laughs> a strong number two. And why you say South Africa is a strong number two? All right. The thing about South Africa is they got the the baddies, and you see them everywhere. You see them everywhere. They're in the club. They're everywhere. And um, they're built. They have the best natural bodies on the planet. The best natural bodies on the planet. Yeah. I've been I've been to, I've been to Brazil. I've been to Colombia. A lot of fake bodies in Colombia. I love Colombia, but a lot of fake bodies there. But um, South Africa, bro, number one in the planet, natural, natural, keyword. And and he got a bunch of red bones. What people don't realize, but a lot of red bones, just like here. But South Africa is a whole nother level. Wow. <laughs> well, I appreciate this interview. I appreciate the honesty. Um, tell everybody your YouTube again. Um, GMT Travels. You know, GMT Travels. I try to show a fun upscale side of africa that's my um, goal for the next few months and that's really it for now all right it'll be tagged in the description pinned comment and the title so y'all make sure y'all go subscribe <laughs> appreciate y'all watching